Brian Hines will tip it off. He'll tip it off with Leonardo Ido. Music is stopped. The ball's been tipped, and Mitch Prendergast will hand it off to Griffin Corniker, and we'll start tonight's University Athletic Association matchup. Steele in the front court. Spartans trying to get it back. Maroons will control it. Masiulionis picked up by Frilling. You know, Sar, you mentioned it in our pregame. Coach McGinnis said that the main thing that we need to do, his team, is control our turnovers. And they start the game with a turnover. Yeah, definitely it really not the hurt start. them last Friday night against Emory. Definitely not the start Coach McGinnis wanted. And he told us they've had three games this year where they started off slow in the first half. And those games they've struggled. They want to get going here early, control the ball, control the pace of the game. Long three at the shot clock. Chicago tries to save it, and they will. The Maroons back with the basketball. Shorter shot, this time not the long three by Zach Munson. And senior from Carmel, Indiana, knocks it down. Those are also plays you can't allow as the Spartans. You can't allow the Maroons to create extra opportunities for themselves. Frilling with a fadeaway, left block. Cole Frilling. Frilling averaging 16 points per game this year. Second year of basketball here for the Spartans. He's a listed junior, but of course, most teams in the UAA did not play last year. That's Bryce Hopkins. Hopkins, 6'5", junior. Frilling with the basketball. Now it's Bob Fowler. Hines to Fowler. Bob got it stripped. Chicago in the backcourt. 4-2 Maroons very early on here, opening half. Game one of a doubleheader tonight from Horsburg Gymnasium. And another so turnover early for the Spartans. Again, they need to control the pace and probably slow themselves down right now. Off a high screen, knocked down by Hopkins. Bryce has got four points. Fowler inside, tried to get it to Hines. And the ball went off a of Maroon. Spartans will keep it. Masiulionis will take a seat. Elliot Pascal will jump in for Ignis, who used to play for Todd McGinnis. Loved watching Ignis play here in Horsburg Gymnasium. This is Corniker at the foul line. Boy, Prendergast has been playing well all year long. Griff with the spin. Good defense by Chicago. Spartans trying to find a tough look, and Corniker knocks down a three. And that's why this team is so good, even when you think you have defense. They played it perfectly throughout. They had no openings. They still create shots that you don't expect. Beautiful play that time by Corniker. Chicago trying to match the threes, rattled and dropped. It's up and down for Beckman. Nine five Maroons early on here. This is a high screen. Fowler broke down the defense, missed the shot. Frilling almost got it back. Frilling's dangerous on the offensive glass, leads this team in rebounds per game. Little fadeaway that's rebounded by Hines. Here comes Corniker, Phil in the middle. Griff looking left, gonna go left by himself. Little soft touch drops in. Corniker's got five. Yeah, another nice play, creative play that time. We saw him take the three, and he showed his strength inside as well. You know, Griffin's been doing more of that the past couple of games. He's such a distributor. Unselfish, six assists per game, but he's starting to take a little bit of offensive responsibility as, 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 as pertaining to scoring himself. It's been good to see. This is Prendergast, top of the key. Mitch breaking it down. Pass was blocked. He was trying to pass it right to Frilling. Pass got knocked out of bounds by Pascal. And it's a good drive by Prendergast. He has a little help behind him from Brian Hines. Looked like he just didn't see him that time coming off a screen or looked like he was going to set a screen and chose not to. Prendergast off a pass up and down. Mitch Prendergast from Griffin Corniger. Spartans with their first lead. 10-9, 16 minutes left to play. Opening half on what's going to be a fun night of basketball here inside Horsburg Gymnasium. High for the rebound, it's Frilling. Cole with his eyes up. This is Mitch, pull back, three shot in the air, rolled out. Munson with the rebound. Here comes Chicago. 
The other thing Coach McGinnis told us earlier this week is Chicago likes to shoot a lot of threes. Right now, still very early, just one for four so far, struggling from behind the arc. Well, on the season, they've made 113 threes of their 411 attempts. That's a 12-footer. Soft right hand shot, and it's good. Zach Munson's got four. 11-10 yeah. Maroons. And once again, that, that shot percentage doesn't look good on paper, but when this team gets hot, it's tough to stop. Corniker trying to break down the defense. Mitch with a spin, fade a shot. Left, it's short, and Munson grabs the rebound. Zach Munson leads the team in rebounds this year, averaging five per game. That led to that. The rebound, the defense to the offense, and that's Beckman with another bucket. He's got five points. Yeah, Chicago doing a good job spreading the ball around earlier, getting a couple different guys involved in the scoring. Beckman leading with five now. Spartans on the season, averaging 88 points per game. In conference, in the University Athletic Association, averaging 83. So they can score. This is Corniker. Cole Frilling with a ball fake and then shoots it. He reloaded right at the shot clock buzzer. Spartans have drawn cold. They were up 10-9. Maroons on a 6-0 run. It'll look to go seven. Shot in the foul. Foul's on Frilling. That's Cole's first. Yeah, and that was a mistake that time by Frilling. Don't want to foul on those type of shots. If you go straight up and down, you're still able to put pressure on those shooters. He was behind the play that time and didn't need to try and go over the back like that. This is Elliot Pascal at the foul line. He's an 80% free throw shooter on the season. Up and down, and Pascal's got three. Four different players have scored the 16 points for the Maroons early on, about six minutes gone in this opening half. They've, they got, they've got their largest lead at 16-10. This is Newton banging bodies. Soft right hand hook, won't go. Spartans just cold as it is outside right now. You know you're going to have your stretches in games where you go ice cold. You just got to hope that you can play a little defense during those stretches. Fowler on the break after a turnover. Beautiful passing. Newton to Corniger to Bob Fowler. He finishes it off. There's that defense turning into offense that time. It looked like it hit the foot of a Spartan player. No kick called that time, but making the most of that opportunity. Newton trying to help with defense inside. Bucket's made, though. It's made by Thomas Karowski. Hunter Drenth also in the game for Case Western Reserve. This is Drenth with it. Boy, he had a huge second half. Last 11 minutes of that win over Rochester. Came in for Frilling, who had four fouls, and Cole never got back in the game because that young man, Hunter Drenth, was on fire. And Drenth picking up right where he left off. He came off the bench and had nine points, especially in those last five minutes. He had a three, had a wild dunk, sent this crowd. Well, I mean, no fans, but this the sideline was really pumped up. Luke Gensler with the shot. Gensler for the Spartans. Ryan Newton trying to keep it alive. Maroons will control it. Gensler, first-year player out of Pittsburgh, Upper St. Clair. First time we've called his name this year. Nice feed inside off a screen, shots missed. The bunny just flat out missed. Newton and Corniker out top. Ryan to Fowler. Bob backing down left block. Little soft right hand hook. Rattle wouldn't go. Corniker will set it up again. Griffin will shoot it. Oh, it went in and out. That's just unfortunate. Two shots back to back went in and out for the Spartans. Karowski. Dribbled out of an offensive possession. Griffin looking back. Hunter Drent will shoot the three. And that's an air ball. Maroons are going to get it. Coach McGrath wants a timeout. I think. He's talking to the official. Maybe not. We're just talking to the official. I'm still not sure. Coach McGinnis is wondering if there's a timeout, too. I think there's a timeout on the floor. There, timeout? Yes, there's a timeout on the floor. All right, 11.56 left, opening half. Spartans down four. We'll be back. 
Have you heard the news? The Intercontinental Cleveland has earned its 10th consecutive Four Diamond Award from AAA in recognition of its high-quality accommodations and exceptional service standards. Planning an important event like a corporate meeting, annual conference, fundraising gala, holiday party, or highly personalized wedding? Choose excellence in the Intercontinental Cleveland. Our planning professionals will take time to consider every detail and lead you through an experience which is proudly world-class. Call us today at 216-707-4100 for more details or to request a tour of our spectacular accommodations. Did you know, Sar, that this gym, Horsburg Gymnasium, was named after Robert Horsburg, who graduated from Case in 1914. And then he spent 40 years on the Board of Trustees here and the Alumni Council, and the gym was dedicated in his honor in 1957. Horsburg Gymnasium honoring Robert Horsburg, class of 1914 from Case. Chicago with the basketball. Their largest lead has been six. Spartans have led once by one point at 10-9. Newton fighting for that rebound. Coming up with it is Gensler. Hunter Drenth going to pass it back to Luke. Luke's going to shoot it from way out top off the backboard. He kind of did a shy little smile. Luke didn't call it, but he'll take it. Gensler with a three. Yeah, that's the third three now for the Spartans, and that's what's keeping them in this game right now. Once again, just starting to control it themselves. Once they get the shots that they like, they can take advantage of that and take advantage on the scoreboard. Inside, working against Thorburn. Luke playing good defense. Newton grabbing that rebound. Here comes Gensler with it. Back to Ryan. He can shoot it. He will, and he'll make it. Ryan Newton from Gensler. Newton with a three. Spartans back in the lead. We talked about in the pregame, Ron, this Spartan team can do it all over the floor and another takeaway. Steal from Gensler. Laid it up with his right hand on the left side, protecting it from the defender. And those now four threes the Spartans have made all by four different players, Korniker, Prendergast, Gensler, and Ryan Newton now getting involved. Strong drive, open look, three in the air, missed it short. And the ball off the Spartans, Maroons will get it back. Shot hit the rim, so that shot clock should reset. But that's a shot you gotta have as the Maroons team, especially the Spartans have started to control this game. They've scored five straight now. And against a team so tough, nationally ranked team. Those are, those are points you can't give away. So the fresh 20 on the shot clock. That was Hopkins. Whistle, the foul's on Drenth. They'll call the first foul on Hunter. You see Hunter working against Hopkins. Well, it looked like he got a little bit too close that time. Official just didn't like that. This is Munson and Hopkins out top. Hot potato, hot potato. Neither one wanted it. Munson with a high screen. Martin with a basketball back to Munson. Six seconds to shoot. Maroons looking for a good look. They're going to get it on the block. Newton banging against Munson. Beautiful shot. Body control, soft. Zach Munson with the hook shot. He's got six. Again, Chicago spreading the ball around. We've seen that shot a couple times. They're strong inside. Good defense from the Spartans, but just a better shot that time. Ryan Newton going right at Monson. Went over the front of rim that fell off. Here comes Beckman. Ball stolen by Gensler. Prendergast will pick it up. Mitch looking left, goes left. Newton shot, missed it. Looking for the foul. Thorburn wrestles for a rebound, still wrestling. And we got a foul. Luke took a deep breath. He said, come on. I think I got three guys. Here's the pass. That was Bryce Hopkins playing the defense on Newton that time. Ryan's going to take a seat. Brian Hines is back in. It's 22-20. Spartans with the lead. Just over nine minutes to play opening half. Thorburn to Hines. He'll swing it to Gensler. Luke thought about shooting it. It's been hot. This is Prendergast. Screen and roll. Thorburn, ball above his head. He's going to take it baseline. Drenth will shoot it, this one's short. You could tell from the release that that was not gonna get there. 
And a foul in the backcourt. It will go against Thorburn. Yeah, he shot two threes now that have come up short. And he's going to step off for a moment. Cole Frilling will come back on. Cole Frilling back in, the junior from Coldwater. Aerospace and mechanical engineering major. My partner Sarzucci, a finance major. Everybody glad to have a new semester in that double week of finals in December behind them, right, Sar? Absolutely, excited to get back in normal classes. It's number 23, Thomas Kurowski with a three. Kurowski's got five points. And it's a 5-0 run right now for the Maroons. Spartans with a different look. Prendergast, top of the key off the backboard, tipped around, and here comes Chicago. And I think Prendergast was trying to draw a foul that time. You could tell he released that ball really quickly. His feet didn't seem set, and he didn't get it that time, and it's going to cause that wild shot. Mitch on defense, they'll say the hand check foul on the baseline. So that foul will go against number zero. That's his first. Fans back in the stands tonight. First time in this University Athletic Association season. Spartans played all of January. No fans allowed inside. They're back inside. Masks must be worn, though. It's just great to have everybody back. Yeah, and you can feel Sar the said, great to be back in class. Right, you can feel the difference in energy in this stadium. Even last week at the end of the game against Rochester, we heard the, the sidelines get amped up, but now with the crowd, it really accentuates that home court advantage. Spartans get beat on the boards right now. Opportunities, two and sometimes three for Chicago. Chicago on the season, rebounding-wise, Averaging 36 rebounds per game. They're one better than their opponents over the stretch of 15 games. Yeah, and they've already got 14 so far in this game, including four on the offensive end. Munson with a good ball fake. That was too easy for Zach Munson. He's got eight. So it was 22-18. The Spartans had a four-point lead with 10.40 left. And over the last three minutes, they had not scored until Bob Fowler did that. Fowler with his second basket. And his teammates needed that one. That stopped a 7-0 Chicago run. Spartans got to double that up with some defense. Flory playing defense inside, got backed into the basket. And there's a foul underneath the basket. Will go against the Maroons. Elliot Pascal. I don't think. Actually, I don't think they called the foul on Elliot. They just said he knocked it out of bounds. Todd McGinnis. Todd in his sixth season, 13th overall, six years here at Case Western Reserve. Matching up tonight against one of the veteran coaches in University Athletic Association play, Mike McGrath. That fouls on Leonardo Ito. There's McGrath right there in his 23rd season. All he's done is win 316 games. It's the school's all-time winning as coach. Yeah, it's so tough to do in this conference especially. And their rival team, Washington University, one of the toughest in the country. Frilling with a thrilling drive. It was hard to say, frilling with a thrilling. Yeah, and that was a really tough play. Showed his strength inside that time. Those aren't easy shots, but the Spartans have a lot of creativity on the offensive end, and that's how they're able to set up these shots. Spartans got confused on the high screen, the ball screen there. They're lucky the Maroons did not recognize it. Long three, Frilling chases the loose ball. Cole with it, right side, looking to the middle. Goes all the way cross court. How about that, Daniel Flory? Whoa, that was a, like a 35-footer. Wow, what a three from Flory. Again, we mentioned in the pregame, one of the top three-point shooters. He shoots 43, almost 44%. And that was beautiful, a long-range three that time. Daniel Flory, Spartans back up. Four with 5.43 left in the opening half. 
These two teams always play each other tough. A year ago, or actually two years ago now, they split both games. Munson, how about that? Zach Munson going outside, knocking that down. He's got 11. Yeah, first player in double figures, and he's done it inside the paint, now showing off his range. Zach Munson playing really well so far, and the Spartans are going to have to do something different to stop him, especially inside. Fouls on Beckman. That's Brandon's first. Yeah, Zach Munson averaging eight points per game this season. His forte or his gift to this basketball team has been rebounding. He leads the team in rebounding, but he's red hot tonight scoring. Grab that rebound off the thrilling miss. Here comes Pascal with it. Elliott right side. Gets a screen. Looking for Munson rolling off of it. Good ball movement. Chicago down a point. Five minutes to go opening half. Fade away across the lane. Tour of the rim and dropped. That's Hopkins. Bryce Hopkins says six. That's some beautiful display of agility and speed that time from Hopkins, using that to set up that shot, the fadeaway, get away from the defense. Flory broke some ankles. Missed the shot. Hines can't grab the rebound. Munson beat him to it. How many rebounds does Munson have so far? Yeah, Zach Munson already with five boards. That is sixth now, actually. There is a matchup problem that Chicago has identified and they are exploiting right now. Zach Munson with 11 points, five rebounds. He's got the basketball now. Backing down Hines, soft right hand hook, won't go. But he got a good look. Corniker with it. Griffin, Flory will shoot it again in front of the Chicago bench. He left it short and Beckman grabbed the loose ball. This is Beckman with it. Brandon dribbling right. Ran into Corniker. They're going to call the charge. Boy, that was as obvious as obvious could be. Brandon just dropped that left shoulder and hit Corniker like Dick Buckus over the middle. He used to hit uh, running backs for the Bears in the monster of the midway. Yeah, it's a smart play from Corniker. He could see he wanted to drive, so he set his feet, stayed in position, and made sure to get directly in front. If you get hit on the side, remember, that's not going to be called for a charge. So great positioning that time from Corniker. Skylar Twyman, number 11 now in the game for Chicago. Hunter Drenth is back in. This is Fowler with the basketball. Bob getting a screen from Newton. Hesitation dribble, runs into a double team, and that's going to be trouble. They're going to say it was tipped. I guess I missed the tip. Corniker, quick to the lane, drew the foul as he was going. Foul's on the floor, not a shooting foul. Foul's on Twyman. Yeah, and he looked like he just grabbed the arm that time, but that Chicago bench erupted when, just as you missed the tip, Ron, I seem to have missed it as well, but. This is Fowler off a screen, off the inbound. Got to make that shot. Twyman working against Corniker. 3.30 and counting left to play opening half. Maroons were up as many as six. Spartans have been up as many as four. It's been a game of spurts, really, so far. That's Newton with a nice block. Newton and Fowler. They're going to call a foul on somebody. They're going to call it on... Now they're going to call it on Bob Fowler. Let's take a look. Yeah, yeah they looked got... like he hit that right hand that time. I thought, honestly, they could have called a foul on Drenth before the shot. Seemed to miss that one, but they're going to get Newton. So here's a look at Hopkins. 68% from the foul line this year. Hopkins from Palatine, Illinois. He's a junior. Leads the team, a balanced team in scoring. Bryce leads them with 12, but they've got Beckman with 11, and they've got Pascal with 11 as well. So made one, missed one. Spent his season percentage. Drenth out top. Going against Hopkins and going to draw the foul. They say the foul is on Bryce Hopkins. That's Bryce's first. Yeah, Take another look tough at play that time by Drenth. You can see Hopkins didn't have his feet set. That's why even though you see Drenth kind of lean into him, you don't get a charge call there. Hunter Drenth, 86% this year from the foul line. The sophomore from Revere High School. Hunter played at Revere for Dean Rejas. And 
his high school coach, I used to cover when he played high school, Valley Forge High School in Parma. Dean Rahas was a part of a lot of great high school basketball teams for John Stavoli at Valley Forge High School. So Hunter makes them both. Dean's doing a great job out there at Revere. Pete Nance, one of his former players, one of Hunter's former teammates, playing at Northwestern in the Big Ten. Twyman, now Martin with it against Prendergast. Inside, three minutes to play, game's tied at 31. Seven seconds to shoot, shot missed badly. That's a dentist shot. What I mean by that, it comes off the rim or the backboard so hard and so quickly that it almost knocks you in the mouth if you're not ready, and next thing you know, you're fixing your teeth. If yeah, you're it a dentist, like a, you love shots like that. It looked like a rush shot that time from Kurowski. He heard the bench started counting down, but he had time, seven seconds. You can settle down and still pass the ball off or create a new shot. It's not the type of shot you want to take. Now, Patrick Mahomes proved that there's never too little time. Look what he did in 13 <laughs> seconds. Here we go. Prendergast with the basketball. Game locked at 31. This one almost jumped into my hands. Ball was tipped by the Spartans. Maroons will get it back. Two subs in for Chicago. Coming back in is Zach Monson with 11 points and also Elliot Pascal. Pascal's in with two. Yeah, Munson, you mentioned 11 points, six rebounds, one assist. And he's shooting five of seven from the field. Again, we talked about he has some sort of matchup error that Chicago is exposing right now. Umar Rashid now in the basketball game for the Spartans. Umar, first year player, six foot six, 190 out of Canton, Georgia. Umar wearing number 11. Newton on defense. Here's Umar. Umar guarding Kurowski. Prendergast with almost a steal. Martin will shoot the three, lets it go long. Kurowski had it, Kornicker took it. Griffin with the basketball, controlling, gonna take it all the way, lay it up, missed it. Martin will pull it back in. Spartans just missing shots right now. It's, it's as simple as that. Yeah, and they're still shooting 40% from the field, but they've been kind of streaky in terms of their shooting. Rashid knocks down a three. Umar Rashid. <laughs> you can hear the fans go, ooh. And once again, there's that home court advantage. You see the crowd going wild for the first time all 2022, and it's exciting to have them back here in Horsburg Gymnasium. Munson again. Spartans don't have an answer for him right now. I mean, that was Newton guarding him that time. Yeah, again, Newton, one of the best defensive players on this team, and he's played a good game defensively so far, but it looks like Munson's just finding a way to set himself up just better. Ryan shoots it long. Kurowski comes down with a rebound. 25 seconds left in this opening half. Spartans up a point. Maroon's going to work it for one final shot. Hunter Drenth going to come out and trap near half court. This is Munson with the basketball. Hopkins now with it, holding the ball. Five seconds. Bryce is going to shoot, and Hunter grabs him. They've got a foul to give. 3.4 seconds. That's not a bad foul there, Ron. Force them to try and set up a play with three seconds left. It's tough to get off a good shot, especially. I expect the Spartans to play a tight man right here, put a man over the ball. Well, Fowler and Hines come back in for some length. Thorburn's going to come in, replace Corniker, also for some length. So Spartan's going to try to be big here in the final three seconds. Kurowski will inbound it. Shot up, missed it short, and that wraps up the opening half. It's 34-33, Case Western Reserve over the University of Chicago, and we're at halftime. Todd McGinnis is going to join us. Sorry if you give Coach McGinnis your headset. Todd, a lot of activity in that opening half. Both teams playing a lot of guys and just up and down the floor, probably not the most uh, tidy game that you would like as a coach, but you know, here you are, it's, it's a one point difference at halftime. Yeah, that was something. Uh, <laughs> that was something. <laughs> not good. I would describe that as not good basketball. Um, 
<laughs> well, I was just trying it. to lead you down a, you know, a nice path. So I look fat. I got to lose some weight here. Sorry, let's <laughs> look at myself. I think it's the polo, but that. So let me ask you about Munson, though. Right now, he seems to be a matchup problem for you guys. It, no, no matter who you got on him, he's got 13 points, six rebounds, and it seems easy for him. Yeah, it's probably the game. You know what I mean? If we can guard him in the second half, maybe we'll put someone on him. We can. Try to guard him a little bit better. You know, Brian knew they're trying their hardest. You know what I mean? They're, they're trying their hardest. And um, right now it's not what we need. But, you know, they'll do better in the second half on them. And then just in transition, we're just a train wreck, you know. So going in, what do you say to the fellows in the locker room? Play better. Play better. Yeah, Simple as that. You know, literally get it out in transition, make easy buckets. Um, you know, when we go... I mean, look at these. You know, we're six for 18. Like, we haven't got any offensive rebounds. Like, the game's just a little slow right now, and that's what they want to play. You know, block, block or move or slow it down. Um, you know, and we're playing in their hands right now. All right, Todd. Thanks. We'll see you later, Todd McGinnis, head men's coach here at Case Western Reserve University. We're gonna take a short time out. We'll come back with Matt Englander, the baseball coach at Case Western Reserve. We're gonna talk to Matt. Set up spring baseball when we return. Intercontinental Suites has been transformed into much more than a hotel. It is a center of wellness and tranquility, featuring renovated suites, an expanded fitness center, and pure rooms for guests requiring the most allergen-resistant rooms on the market. C2, our Mediterranean-style restaurant and bar, accentuates the ambiance of relaxation and rejuvenation. Chef Omar Jones has designed a menu full of fresh, locally grown herbs and vegetables, along with a flavorful cuisine inspired by the beneficial Mediterranean diet. Call the Intercontinental today at 216-707-4. 4300 or visit us at hotelsclevelandclinic.com or on Facebook. So, Matt, I'm walking out of the Veal Center parking garage at about, let me see, probably 415, and I come out into the wind and the wintry weather. The snow's falling softly. There's white everywhere. There's an ice rink off to my right, and I hear what? It's baseball season. I That's hear the hear. ting of aluminum bats. That's right. And I can hear them outside, but they're inside the Veal Center, and I knew it was you. So you had your team in there this afternoon getting ready for spring season, and it's January 28th. When does that spring season prep start for the Spartans? So we started on Tuesday just a few days ago. It was our first day of practice. Our first game is in less than a month. So February 26th, we play out at Washington and Jefferson in Pennsylvania. Uh, we're getting ready. We You're playing in Pennsylvania on February 26th? We play in Ohio on February 27th. So, <laughs> uh, we play at Mount Union on that Sunday. So we got a good couple of doubleheaders to start the year, uh, and we'll be ready for them. We can't wait. It's a fun group this year. Matt, have you played in February in Ohio before? Certainly. Really? For sure. Oh, yeah. I mean, last year, because of COVID, we didn't practice indoors. So on a day like today, we'd shovel the football field, and we'd go out there and practice for an hour and be done. Uh, so we're certainly not scared of the cold. You know, we, we, we do what we need to do to get ready to play. Matt, you are the school's all-time winningest coach in baseball. And over the last decade, your Spartans have averaged at least 27 wins per season. That success has been sustained for a long time. What's, what has made that happen? What has helped make that happen? I think the most important thing, you know, my voice is only so loud. The kids that we have in the program, they take such such an ownership of doing things the right way, whether I'm there, not there, whether we're in season, out of season. You know, I've never been around a group of people that year after year, as the names change, the attitude, the culture stays the same. It's it's one of those things that, you know, it's hard to build and then it's harder to keep. Yeah. And the guys in the program do an incredible job of including the younger guys, teaching them how to do things, teaching them the right way to do things. And success follows from having those types of habits. I saw, I walked over to the Beal Center when I came in, and you had the, uh, you know, the three artificial mounds, so to speak, out. You had pitchers and catches working, and then you had the net going with some guys in there hitting the ball. How many, how many athletes, student athletes, do you have on the team this year? We have 33 this year, uh, which is right around where we want to be. We like to be somewhere 30 to 34, so it's a good number. We're really excited about this group. We've got three kids that are, are playing as grad students, uh, Jake Lott, Trey Armstrong, and then a transfer, Evan Faxon. We have a lot of, of kids that have played, uh, and then a lot of guys who are really hungry, right? So even our juniors, they haven't had a full season yet. And so we've got some talent on this team. We've got some guys with something to prove. 
we're really fired up about this group. It's a, it's a talented group of kids. It's a tough group of kids. They care about each other. It's going to be a fun spring. You know, Matt, you mentioned those juniors who haven't had a full season is, is what you said. Last year, did you play any games at all? We played we played 30. So we were 20 and 10 last year. Okay. We were only allowed to play teams from Ohio. And we could only play teams that were allowed to play us. Right. So like the OAC, they only played OAC teams. So that was close to us. Half the OAC wasn't allowed to play outside their conference. So we were really limited in the teams that we were able to play. We were thankful to get 30 games in. And, you know, Absolutely. in the middle of a pandemic, it's still something. Uh, but to say that we're eager to get going this year, would be the understatement of, of the century. We can't wait to get going with this group. Do you take a team to Florida this year? Or we, uh, South we Carolina go to or South some, Carolina. some yeah, so, southern trip? Yeah, we're kind of barnstorming. So we're going for the first half of spring break to Roanoke, and we're going to play North Carolina Wesleyan once and then Roanoke three times. And then we go to South Carolina, Lexington, South Carolina. We play Brevard College once, and then we have a four-game set with uh, Cortland State, who's you know, this this year's schedule. We, we've had the number one strength of schedule three times in the last, I think, six years. And this is the toughest schedule we've ever put together. It's, you know, top to bottom. There's not a bad team on there. There's probably not an average team on there. So we've got our work cut out for us. We're fired up, and that's what we do here. We play the best teams we can find, and we try to beat them. You know, and you've been successful at it. You know, school's all-time winning as coach. As I mentioned, 27 wins over the last 10 years every year. Playing that tough schedule sometimes can it can it can work for you. It gets you ready, or it can work against you if you get your head beat in every night. So, I mean, how do you make sure that you balance that when you schedule your seasons? You want to get guys ready. You want to have them face the best. But as a coach, you also know that it's a long season. And if you destroy them up front, you know, it could be even a longer season. Well, it's especially tough for us because our conference is we don't have an automatic qualifier. So we can't start slow and then go win our conference tournament and make the playoffs. Every game for us is a playoff game. And so it's tough. I mean, our guys, it's asking a lot from our guys that, February 26th, we're going to play W&J, who's a perennial right. regional team. They've been to several World Series. And these games really matter, guys. These games really matter. Um, that, that's where the toughness part comes in. We know what we're up against. We're able to prepare. That's why we're in the gym. That's why it's snowing sideways, and we're doing what we got to do. Uh, we, know it's, you know, we know what the deal is, and it's not an excuse to not perform. It's not an excuse to fail. Uh, we just have to go out and you know, get ready for the challenge that's ahead of us. Matt, why are you still coaching? Uh, because I love the kids in the program. Yeah. I, I love the kids that we have. Uh, being around the game is rewarding in a lot of ways. I mean, you um, look like you're 21, but <laughs> you've been here a long time. And yeah, I'm 41. You've been very successful, and you, you could, you know, wrap it up and yeah, probably be I, a Hall of Famer. I don't know what else I, I, don't know what else I would do, uh, but, you know, I, I've never thought about doing anything else. I, I, I love the guys that I have here. I mean, that's, the, that's really the reason is day in, day out. When I'm at practice, it really doesn't matter what kind of mood I was in, what was happening. I love the guys that we have. I love working with them. They're they're responsible. They're attentive. They're just good people. And getting a chance to work with 33, you know, quality kids, and then our coaching staff. I mean, the people that are in our program are fantastic. And I don't know if it keeps you young or it makes you old sometimes, but it certainly is valuable. It's certainly interesting. It's something I love doing. Well, I got to tell you, Matt, hearing the sound of that ting when I came out of the garage into that winter wind and all that snow falling, and I love snow and I love the cold. It's winter. We might as well have it. But it gave me a warm feeling inside that spring wasn't that far away. And you pointed out you've got a game in the third week of February, so that's not far away at all. That's less than a month away. And you feel really good about your team this year, and, and that's great to hear. Matt, um, you guys have an opportunity because if Major League Baseball can't get their labor situation settled in, the only games that are going to be attended or folks get a chance to get a baseball fix are the local college games and the local high school games. So hopefully you get a great crowd over there at the Knob. It's a, it's a great facility. Um, it, let's take – we have a moment. Describe the Knob the baseball stadium that you guys play in for somebody who hasn't been there where it sits in the neighborhood where it sits in the juxtaposition of the the dorms and the football stadium and everything about it sure it's a terrific place i mean just 
to, as a place to play, it's incredible. The, the surface, we have a, a, a turf surface on the infield, but it's not the kind with, that's all filled with rubber so it doesn't bounce over guys' heads. It plays like a well-manicured baseball field. It's a big ballpark, so there's no such thing as a cheap home run, but it's an exciting place, right? We, we have big gaps, so a lot of triples, a lot of doubles get hit there. It's a place where we can play fast, we can play an aggressive style. From a, from a visitor or from a, a, a spectator's point of view, uh, it's a beautiful ballpark. It's intimate. You can sit right there. There's there's chairbacks. There's bleachers. There's a there's brick everywhere. Uh, it's set in the neighborhood, so you can see it looks like you're looking out Wrigley, uh, with all the apartments and houses in the background, cars driving by. We have a beautiful backstop, which is invisible. It's the same netting they use at the major league ballparks, so you can you can see everything unobstructed. It's a great place to play. It's a great place to come and watch a baseball game. Do you know when the first home game is? Oh Off man, the, the first home game. That's a really good question. It's after spring break, so it would be uh, somewhere Sometime around the March, March 17th yeah. neighborhood, right All in right. there. We'll try to be there. It sounds great. We look forward to it. Thanks, Man, thanks Ron. a lot. Thank you. Matt Englander, the baseball coach, all-time winningest coach in the history of this school.